Hello, welcome to St. Macker's Ramfurly Church on Sunday the 5th of April 2020. This is our Palm Sunday service. Originally we had planned to have an all-age service with the junior church leading us in worship. Unfortunately that is not possible uh, in the present circumstances. I was supposed to be leading a communion service in Loch Winnach Parish Church on this day because next Sunday their church and their congregation will be dissolved and closed. So I just want to mention that because it's very sad and it causes me great pain that they will not be able to have the final services that um, they were preparing for. And I would ask you to remember them in their prayers. As our call to worship, I want to read some words from Psalm 118, today taken from the Message Translation. It's a song of praise, and towards the end you will notice why this song is often read on Palm Sunday. Thank God because he is good, because his love never quits. Tell the world, Israel, his love never quits. And you, clan of Aaron, tell the world, his love never quits. And you who fear God, join in, his love never quits. Blessed are you who enter in God's name, from God's house we bless you. God is God, he has bathed us in light. Festooned a shrine with garlands, hang coloured banners above the altar. You're my God, and I thank you. O oh my God, I lift high your praise. Thank God, he is so good, his love never quits. Let us join together in prayer. Enter, Lord Jesus. We welcome you into our midst, here on this Palm Sunday morning. Just as the people of Jerusalem welcomed you way back in Bible times. You came to us as Christ the King, triumphant over darkness and hate. You come to us as Christ the King, victorious over pride and injustice. You come to us as Christ the King, humble on the back of a donkey. Teach us your ways, Lord, that we too might conquer what makes us less than pure. In our praise, in our reading of scripture, in our listening, help us to walk in humility and service. Assist us to proclaim your glory. Enable us to follow your example in our town and village streets and in the interactions we have with each other. We confess that we're all too quick to shout, Hosanna, Hosanna. How easy it is to be carried by the crowd. And we confess that if we were present in those Bible times, rather than in our present day, we too would likely, all too soon, change our cries to crucify, crucify, have mercy, Lord. Forgive us, Lord, and guide us in your paths. In our prayers, renew and transform us, we ask. Enter our hearts, our minds, our souls today, that your kingdom might come amongst us. Hosanna, Hosanna. Amen. As it is Palm Sunday, we read from Matthew's Gospel, the story of Jesus approaching the city of Jerusalem, which was the capital city of Judah. Most of his ministry, Jesus had worked up in the north in Galilee and preached there and healed people, but now he had consciously made his way down to the capital city, to Jerusalem, the city of David, where he knew he would die. Let us read Matthew 21 verses 1 to 17. 
as they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage on the Mount of Olives. Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there, with her colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, say that the Lord needs them, and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to daughter Zion, See, your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and placed their cloaks on them for Jesus to sit on. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest heaven! When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? The crowds answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. Jesus entered the temple courts and drove out all who were buying and selling there. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the benches of those selling doves. It is written, he said to them, my house will be called a house of prayer, but you are making it a den of robbers. The blind and the lame came to him at the temple and he healed them. But when the chief priests and the teachers of the law saw the wonderful things he did and the children shouting in the temple courts, Hosanna to the son of David, they were indignant. Do you hear what these children are saying? They asked him. Yes, replied Jesus. Have you never read? From the lips of children and infants, you, Lord, have called forth your praise. And he left them and went out of the city to Bethany, where he spent the night. This Sunday is the last Sunday of Lent. I had this year, as I have done for a number of years, taken my Facebook app off my phone as a Lent discipline. It was intended as a way to limit the distraction that uh, this inevitably causes in my normal day-to-day -day life. Well, the first couple of weeks that worked quite well. I had deleted my Facebook app from my phone. I found I was a bit less distracted, a bit more calm and a bit more focused. But before long, the coronavirus situation was developing. So this was back in February. And it came to the point where I, ha I felt I had to keep in touch with my colleagues. And um, I usually do that via Facebook. So before too long, I put my Facebook app on my phone and was back to my normal levels of engagement with that. My peace and my calm was well and truly gone, not just because of social media, but just with all the anxiety and the news, all of the discussions going on, what we should do and when we should be doing these things and what would be happening. 
When I read the passage for today about people laying down their coats for Jesus, I was thinking about the things we voluntarily lay down for Jesus. Giving up or laying down something for Lent seems to be a fitting gesture of our dedication to Jesus. We lay something down that perhaps we don't really need, like social media or chocolate or alcohol. The people we just heard about were laying down their coats for Jesus to ride over when he arrived in Jerusalem. In their case, they might have only had the one coat, so it was really quite a significant gesture. They were laying down their coats in order to welcome him as a king. They were committing themselves to him. There is a story in the Old Testament in 2 Kings chapter 9 where people lay down their coats for a newly anointed king, Jehu, um, and they put down their coats for him to walk over them as a sign of their loyalty to him as a new king. The people of Jerusalem who have come out to see Jesus and are laying down their coats, they know what they are doing. They are welcoming Jesus as the new king. Now the palm branches which they take from the trees and wave around also had this connotation. 200 years earlier, Judas Maccabeus had ridden into Jerusalem after defeating pagan armies. People had waved palm branches then to welcome him as a new king. And in the passage we've read, the songs that the people are singing, these are royal psalms, psalms written about the kings, King of David and the King of Solomon, songs again to honour and to welcome a king. So all these things combined in the people's response, the waving and the singing and the laying down of coats were very purposeful actions and they were potentially dangerous. They made a political statement because the Romans wouldn't and didn't take too kindly to political uprisings. So the people of Jerusalem rightly saw Jesus as a king sent from God and they rightly welcomed him with enthusiasm and some degree of personal commitment. But how long would this enthusiasm last? And how far would this commitment stretch? Exactly what kind of king were they wanting Jesus to be? Before the week was up, these people would be part of the crowds shouting for Jesus to be crucified. By that point, they were probably disappointed and disillusioned because he hadn't done anything about the Romans. He hadn't physically or violently stood up to the Romans. Instead, he'd let himself get arrested and spat at and beaten up by the Roman soldiers. That wasn't the kind of king they had wanted to welcome a few days before. In preparation for this service, I was reading in Matthew for Everyone by Tom Wright, uh, which I've recommended a few times to you before. It was written in 2002, but somehow the passage Tom Wright wrote then sounds eerily applicable today. And I've just re decided to read it out in full. Tom Wright writes this. People turn to God notoriously when there is something they want very badly. Of course, that is like finally deciding to learn how to use a telephone only when you urgently need to call an ambulance it would have been sensible to find out how to do it earlier, when it wasn't so important. But that's how people are. 
Church attendance goes up in leaps and bounds when a major crisis strikes. A war, say, or an earthquake. Suddenly, everyone wants to ask the big, hard questions. Suddenly, everyone wants Jesus, in terms of this story, to ride into the city and become the sort of king they want him to be. Give us peace now. Pay my bills and hurry. Save the life of my sick child and do it right away. Give me a job by this time tomorrow. And perhaps the most common prayer of all, help. Jesus intends to answer these and all other prayers. He doesn't wait for our motives to be pure or for us to have sorted out our lives to the point where we can look him in the face, eye to eye, as it were, and do business with him. Of course he doesn't. He comes to seek and rescue the lost. It isn't the healthy who need a doctor, it's the sick. However, at the same time, he must answer in his own way. The people wanted a prophet, but this prophet would tell them their city was under God's imminent judgment. They wanted a Messiah, but this one was going to be enthroned on a pagan cross. They wanted to be rescued from evil and oppression, but Jesus was going to rescue them from evil in all its full depths, not just the surface evil of Roman occupation and exploitation by the rich. Precisely because Jesus says yes to their desires at the deepest level, they will have to say no or wait to the desires they are conscious of and expressed. So far the quote from Tom Wright's book, Matthew for Everyone. If you do have it, you can find it on page 68. Wright makes the point that when times are hard, many turn to God, and that is a good thing. It provides an opportunity. Jesus says he won't turn anyone away who comes to him. However, turning to God for help and welcoming Jesus as king may set us on an altogether more challenging journey. If we rightly acknowledge that Jesus is king over our lives and God has the power to rescue us, then we also should submit all aspects of our life over to him. And how he rescues and helps us might not be exactly what we had in mind. We may need to learn deeper truths in the process. It may be an altogether more confusing, painful and costly journey than we had imagined. Some of our precious tables might get turned over in the process. I have been thinking it is rather ironic that I would choose what to lay down for Lent, my Facebook habit, and I failed at that. And now, because of the coronavirus, I'm forced to lay all sorts of things down. I've been forced to lay down my wee shopping trips, my precious day off by myself without the children, and the escape of planning holidays or trips at the weekend as things to look forward to. We've all been forced to lay down many, many things that we normally take for granted. Some essential and precious, others less so. Seeing family and friends when we want to. Sports on TV or to play with one another. Being able to travel where and when we want. The ability to do our normal job in the normal ways that we are used to, or even to have financial security. This enforced Lent 
for all of us provides an opportunity to discover what exactly we depend on and what have been more mere distractions in our lives. This lockdown Lent forces us to think through how deep our dependence and faith in God is. It tests our commitment to Jesus as King. Are we still prepared to follow Jesus when all the luxuries and comforts are stripped away? Are we still prepared to trust and seek and follow Jesus when we can't just turn up for church on a Sunday? Are we still prepared to trust and follow Jesus when we are walking behind him, perhaps even through the deepest, darkest valleys? We can ask ourselves these questions at a personal level, but they also apply to the life of the church. We said, and said we wanted, a radical change in the Church of Scotland. But are we really prepared for what, is, uh, what this coronavirus might change longer term? And do we trust Jesus to bring new things out of this difficult time? And if we turn to the life of our society and world, this crisis has stopped so many things in their tracks, both good and bad. How will we choose to live life after COVID-19? Will we go back to what we've always known, even the things and the systems that are unfair or unhealthy or unsustainable? Jesus turned the tables in the temple as a prophetic criticism of what went on in there, but also as a warning of the destruction of the temple that would come some decades later. Are we prepared to heed the present crisis as a warning and as an opportunity? Jesus is king. This is good news for the world. No, he doesn't always dance to the strings that we like to pull. But Jesus works. He works out a deeper and greater rescue plan than we can imagine. So let us go on and follow him this holy week. Through the deepest, darkest valleys, all the way to the cross. Dying to self and being raised to new life with him. To this risen King be the glory now and forevermore. Amen. At this point in the service, we would take the offering, which is used for the work of our congregation and for the work of the Church of Scotland across the nation. The costs to the local and national church haven't really changed at this moment in time, and there are concerns nationally that income might be affected 
by the current crisis and by the fact that churches aren't gathering for worship. If you normally give through the free will envelopes, we are asking you to switch to standing order if you're able to do so. Many of you do already give via standing order, but if you don't, if you normally use the envelopes, if you are able to contact your bank and ask to set up a standing order, uh, that would really help. Um, you will be sent some information about this. If that is not possible for one reason or another, and we do understand that, and, and your circumstances are all different, we would uh, ask that perhaps you could set money aside each week or each month uh, so that whenever we can meet again, you're able to, to give that and we can fulfill our commitments to the national church as well as our costs locally. We are also working on a way to give uh, online for those that are visiting us, um, I guess, as a one-off or just stumbling across uh, our, our feed and would like to contribute. As we pray, I will now pray a prayer of dedication over what we have and will give. So let us pray. Father, we have gathered and laid our offerings before you. Just as others laid their palm branches and their cloaks. Take what we have given and pave the road before us with blessing, with generosity and commitment with faith in action and not just by shouts. In Christ's name we give. Jesus, we recognize you as the King who comes. You ride into our lives humbly and inviting us also to a life of humility and sacrifice. You ride into our lives and offer salvation. But in doing so, we need to surrender control to you. Help us to stay faithful when your way does not meet our expectations. Help us to trust when the road is hard and darker than we had imagined. Help us to wait in hope for the new life you bring. At this time, we pray for those who had only just embarked on the journey of following you and for those who are still hesitant to turn to you. Give perseverance and clarity. We pray for those who have perhaps got distracted along the way. Call them back to you and to your path. We pray for those who have been faithful through the years, but are weary and discouraged. Help them to stay the course and find renewed strength with you. We pray for your church across the world at this time. May she be faithful and creative in finding new ways of sharing the good news of your kingdom. May she not resist you upturning the tables in our little temples, but watch out with anticipation for the new things that you are doing. We pray for our nation and for the world. You know what it needs. May our leaders be able to provide what is necessary and fair. May our communities and societies rediscover compassion and common purpose at this time of fear and threat. We pray for all those working in the NHS and other vital services at this time. Keep them safe from harm and may those at the front line know your strength and peace amidst the pressures. We pray for people already personally affected by the coronavirus, perhaps to the point of serious illness or death. Psalm 118 verse 5 says, Out of my distress I called the Lord. The Lord answered me and set me free. You who give us the breath of life, we pray for life, breath and healing for those in distress. We pray for those who won't recover, that they will know that even death cannot separate us from your love. 
we now bring you our own prayers in the silence. Lord, we now pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever. Amen. Usually during Holy Week we share our services with Freeland Church. And on Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday of this week, you are encouraged to tune in to Freeland's live stream, which they will be broadcasting on their Facebook page. Uh, on Thursday at 7 p.m., the Monday Thursday service will be available on our Facebook page and you channel, YouTube channel, as well as uh, via audio file on our website. And from 12 noon on Good Friday, the service for that day will be available via these channel, channels also. If you want to be added to our email newsletter um, to be reminded of these services, please email me or send me a message um, using Facebook Messenger. My email is hanukkah.marshall at churchofscotland.org.uk. Now go into this holy week, whatever it brings, good news or disappointments, faith or fear, Go into this week under the protection, love, and blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs> 